So, without further ado, the Pythagorean to begin off, and please join me in welcoming our first speaker of the day, Chris Lanner, CEO and co-founder of Module. <laughs> Amazing. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. This is just such an exciting time. Um, I'm really excited that you're going to spend the day with us. Uh, I think we'll learn a lot together. This is our first time, so I'm sure there'll be some oopses and things like this, but that's okay. We'll learn from it and do it better next time. So today we have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. We have guest speakers. We have uh, modular people talking. And so the first thing I want to talk about is very important. Confidentiality. Which is not today. <laughs> So today, I am very excited that it is not a secret what any of the stuff is. We want you to be talking about it. We want you to be doing cool stuff. We want you to make some new friends. And so, so please share all of your experiences. Take photos. Take selfies. I'll be happy to join. Uh, and, and let's learn a lot and let's build some cool stuff together. OK, so let's talk about what modular is. So as, as we were talking about, uh, we've been working on this for a while. Turns out these problems we're tackling are actually quite hard. And so just earlier in January, we really started coming into a new phase where it's really about execution. And so we've been shipping and shipping and shipping and shipping. Once we got the abstractions right, we got the APIs in place, we got really kind of proved the technology stack. And so now we're full on and open. And I'm very, very, very excited. This, I mean, it's very I'm very passionate about this for many years, of course. So what are we here to solve? Well, it's really about complexity, fragmentation. It's about what's holding the industry back. Uh, AI is an amazing thing. We want more people to be able to participate. We want more of the capability of the hardware, the software, the algorithms, all to be able to flourish and be able to impact people's lives through the products that y'all and the industry can build. You know, there's lots of ways that people can express this. You know, <laughs> there's not enough compute. <laughs> Sam's buying and spending a lot on this, for example. Um, but this is a problem that lots of people are, are racing to help solve. And so I'm thrilled that there's so many folks that are excited about building amazing and innovative hardware from many vendors, including AMD. There's also so many people in the software space. And so we have, of course, PyTorch and many other systems that are all uh, building and lifting the ecosystem that we have. Um, but again, the challenge we have is this complexity and fragmentation problem. And today, what we see is we see fragmentation at that bottom level of the stack. That bottom level of the stack has to be hardware specific. And because of that, a lot of this complexity metastasizes and builds up into these higher level systems that many more people work with. Now, this complexity seems like it's inevitable, but it's only inevitable because of where we came from. AI software was built really rapidly. AI exploded and changed and evolved really rapidly. Everybody's building incrementally into the stack. And so what Modular did is we said, hey, let's take, oh, I, before I even get there, <laughs> uh, the, this complexity comes in lots of different ways. So like the language problem is one of these. We've got Python, which is beautiful. We've got semicolons and curly braces. We then get different configurations of these. And so like what we see in the industry is this rewrite that ends up happening to build great products. Uh, every time you do this, you have to debug it. Every time you do this, you question performance. And so we think that there's a better path. Oh, this is my uh, point to say I love compiler engineers, but. So a lot of the AI world over the last five years, and this is also partially my fault, but uh, a lot of the world has been kind of taken over by compiler people trying to promise that there will be a magic compiler that solves this problem. Like, just give us this thing. It'll make it easy, fast, portable, et cetera. Um, the challenge with this is that if you put everything into the compiler, you find out that compiler engineers are wonderful, but they're wonderful at a specific part of the problem, and they're not kernel engineers. They're not deep learning researchers. They're not generally um, able to do all of the different work across the stack. And so what we believe, what I believe, is unlocking the community, unlocking the power of all the different personas and enabling people to work together, whether they like tabs and colons or whether they like semi, semi, semicolons and curly braces. So I look at this problem and say that there's actually three really important parts to it. There's usability, there's portability, and performance. And so if you look at it, the, this problem from this lens, you can go and you can map many systems out there. Of course, there's the vendor-specific technologies like CUDA and ROCKM. We owe a debt of gratitude to all of these things. This is what's made AI software possible in the first place. Of course, coming from a hardware company, they're very focused on unlocking the peak performance of the hardware. And so they've been very performance focused. Uh, there's other things. So OpenCL, something I worked on years ago. It's about build it, 
build a vendor neutral independent thing with a committee um, and got a lot more portability but sacrificed performance. Today, uh, it's hard to say let's go use a portable technology if you can't use a tensor core because <laughs> that's where all the flops are. And so and us usability was driven, by dr driven away from usability by fragmentation and that was a challenge. Another thing I love is uh, the Triton programming language. So this is something that I think has been really innovative. I think lots of people have used it and probably many of the people in this room. It really said, okay, well, what we want to bring is more usability into the ecosystem and a little bit of portability. And so Triton has shown you can bring kernels to both AMD and NVIDIA with one thing, and you can get usability, which I think has been really cool. But the challenge is we have no unification. We have a lot of stuff. We have all these different things all fighting for attention. And so I've written a long blog post series about this, if you're interested, called Democratizing AI Compute. Please check it out if you want to nerd out about all the history. But I think that there has to be a better way. And what I want to see is I want something that can unlock many GPU vendors that can unlock full performance, right? GPUs are all about performance. I want it to be accessible to more developers. I believe in all the smart people that are writing GPU kernels today, but there's way more people that are not than there are who are already. And so I think that if we can break down the usability barriers, if we can unlock this technology, if we can make it more consistent and learnable, then we can get even more innovation into the space. And that is what makes me super happy. So this is what modular is tackling. And so what we want to do is we want to say, let's rebuild the stack. Let's rebuild it from the bottom up. That's the only way we can tackle this core complexity in this ecosystem. Let's do it from first principles. Let's learn from the different technologies and uh, let's build that next generation system. And oh, by the way, because it's Gen AI is here, let's know that we need really high performance kernels like flash attention and things like this. Let's not hope that they go away, right? Um, so I'm not gonna give you a full product pitch, uh, but there's a very nice stack that you can build when you do this because you can make all the different layers work together. Uh, today we'll be talking about GPU programming programming primarily, although we're happy to talk about lots of other things, but it, there's the kernel level, there's the model level, there's the cluster level, and AI is such a rich and deep technology stack. Um, I, I, I just love this. So today we'll be talking about Mojo and, and Mojo GPU kernels. And so one of the cool things about Mojo, and I'm not gonna deep dive on it right now, but it brings in all of the best technologies into one place. And so you get Python syntax. It runs not just across multiple GPUs, but it also runs on CPUs, because a lot of flops exist in the CPUs, and they have their own kind of tensor cores. It's got a fancy auto-fusing graph compiler. It's got lots of MLR stuff. It's got a lot of open source code. It's got advanced features like traits and bar checkers and things like this, and so there's a lot of power built into this we've been building for quite some time. And yes, it interoperates. So if you want to export PTX or some IR assembly directly from the system, you can take it, take your code, go do whatever you want with it. So we love developers here at Modular. This is why we're building. We want to unlock capability. And so um, part of this is also, you know, we think we're useful and we can do something and have a contribution in the space, but really we know the AI is too big for us to be pushing it all for ourselves, which is why we're here to hack. So if you go check us out on GitHub Modular Modular, you'll see that we have quite a lot of code. I would really encourage you to look at this. We want this to be the most open platform that exists. And I believe in open source software. I believe in, in building together with the world. And so one of the cool things that we just did is we unlock, unleashed, depending on how you count, more than half a million lines of code or 450K with full version control history going back years of development. Somebody pointed out that this is actually more than it seems because we don't use curly braces. And so there's very few curly braces in this thing. They're just filling up space. So it's actually quite dense and quite powerful. And so this is, this is pretty cool. This includes things like int and float and string and array and things like this, but also high performance GPU kernels. And so I think this may be the largest portable kernel library uh, that's out there that's consistent, designed together using high power abstractions, built to be configurable and reparameterizable, runs on multiple GPUs from different vendors. I think this is super cool. We also have an early serving SDK, and so if you're into building high performance, high throughput servers and things like this, you can check that out. So where, where are we? So we've been busy. So this, this whole thing has been planned for quite some time. We're very excited about like, these steps we're able to take, but we're certainly not done. And so uh, we shipped a release just last week, which is really, really exciting with the open source announcement. Um, since then, we've had big features like uh, FV8 performance landing in the nightlies. Um, uh, Mojo now has a roadmap. Thank goodness, finally. <laughs> and so we'll talk about that more in the, in the meeting on Monday, too, but, uh, but that's on the forums. 
Um, soon our AMD support, which you'll be playing with today, will be graduating into production in our next release, and that'll be a big deal with uh, a bunch of performance things and other features that are coming in. Looking ahead, I would love to explore Python or PyTorch and Mojo integration. I think Mark will be talking a little bit about that. I think that will be fire. I think fire and fire together. And I think that this is fire and flame. I don't know. Uh, I think it's going to be amazing, and I'm very excited to see what Mark's been cooking up. Uh, maybe there'll be more hardware. We'll have to see. Uh, and so building into this, we'll eventually open source more, more of the compiler and other things like this, too. So I'm very, very, very excited about this. So for today, um, I'm going to stop talking here. Uh, I'd love for you all to share your experiences. I think we'll learn a lot together. Please take pictures and share them on social and, and have fun, make some new friends, talk to people you don't know. Um, I think it'll be a great experience. Um, so what we're here to do is we think we can build something that pulls together the best of these. And so I, I don't think we're done. I think that usability can still be improved, for example. Um, but I'm pretty excited with where we are. And I think it's a really exciting time in the industry in general. Um, so I want to say thank you to speakers, including Ramin from AMD, who's, who's going to be talking, as well as Mark, who's going to be talking from PyTorch team. Uh, Simon and Sasha, I haven't seen Sasha, but uh, from Anthropic will be sharing amazing. Uh, Dylan, are you here? Maybe not yet. So Dylan from Semi-Analysis, legendary leader and, and like massive nerd when it comes to all the things. So he's a huge fan. Jeff from OpenAI will be talking about some really cool Mojo Triton things. Uh, Brad and Jack from Modular will be talking about like, how to actually build and do cool stuff with this. And so I'm very excited for this. And thank, thank you to all the speakers for coming. Finally, I want to say thank you to our sponsors. And so thank you for AGI House, like amazing venue. This is an amazing place. I mean, I think it's, it's gorgeous. And also, you picked a very good day. Um, thank you to the GPU mode community, for example, Mark. And uh, it's amazing collection of people who love making all the flops go burr. Thank you, of course, to AMD, who's helping sponsor uh, the prizes and, and compute and things like this, and, and also for the strong presence. And for Crusoe. Crusoe's providing the, the AMD GPUs that we're going to be using today, and so you'll get access to those later. So with that, I think I hand it off to Ramin. Uh,